Now we've looked at how to manage submissions in a previous video. If you go to results, you can filter the submissions here. If you click on download, you can download them as a CSV. And if you click on clear, you can clear the submissions. And if you click on log, you can view their activity. But what if you want to send submissions outside of Drupal? What if you want to integrate web form with a CRM system? How would you do that? Well, you could write custom code, of course, but there is another solution. And that is to use a site called Zapier. Now, Zapier allows you to create workflows between applications. So if we were to select, say, Gmail and Slack, here you can see an example workflow, or they call them Zaps, which is get new Gmail emails in Slack. And then if you scroll all the way down, you can see the triggers for Slack and also the actions and any search capabilities. And then with Gmail, you can see all the available triggers, actions, and searches. So when you create a workflow, you have to define a trigger and an action. So in our example, let's now create a workflow which will add a submission into a Google spreadsheet. Now, Zapier offer free accounts. If you don't have an account, just pause the video now and create one. And the account is pretty lenient. You can do a lot with it. The only thing you can't do is use premium applications. So anything that has the word premium above needs a paid account. So once you are logged in, click on make a zap. So let's first define a trigger. So scroll down till you see webhooks and then select catch hook and then click on save and continue. Just click on continue and then copy this URL. Make sure you keep it kind of secret because if somebody has it, they could send posts into your zap. So just copy it and then go into web form, go to settings, emails and handlers, click on add handler and then click on remote post. And then change the title to Zapier to Google Sheets. And then in the completed URL, paste in the Zapier URL. Now, this means that all of the completed submissions will be sent to Zapier. If you want, you can send draft submissions, deleted submissions, and updated submissions. And you can also control what data is sent to Zapier. So here you can see that all of the elements that we created are going to Zapier. But you can add in things such as language, submitted by, remote IP address if you want. So scroll down and click on save. And then click on save handlers. Now this is all the configuration we need to do in web form. We just need to give it one URL and that's it. So let's go back into Zapier and then click on OK, I did this. So now we need to send a sample submission, which Zapier will use in the action step. So let's go back to our web form and then click on test. And let's just click on next page and submit. And then if we go back to Zapier, you can see the sample was just created and then click on continue. And now we need to define our action. So click on Google Sheets and then select create spreadsheet row. Go ahead and connect Zapier with your Google account. I've already done this, but you will have to do it. And once you've done that, just click on save and continue. So at this point, we need to create our actual spreadsheet. So I'm gonna jump into Google Drive and then create a spreadsheet. I'll call it request a callback. And then if we go back to Zapier and then just search for request. Sometimes you need to click on this check Google Sheets and reload to bring in new items. There we go. There's our sheet. And the worksheet will be sheet one. So the worksheet is this worksheet. So now Zapier is telling us that it can't find any column headers. So if we go back into our request a callback sheet, you can see that there's nothing in the first row. Zapier needs a name in each column. So let's start with column A. We'll add in first name. 
then last name, email, phone, software, and details. So now if we go back to Zapier and click on refresh, it's seen those headers. Now all we need to do is map the column with the sample data. So let's select first name, last name, this one's email, so let's map that to email, phone, software, and details. So at this point, we have mapped our sample data to the columns in our Google Sheets. So click on continue, and then scroll down, and then click on send test to Google Sheets. So this will send an actual row into Google Sheets to test everything out. So if we go to our Google Sheets, you can see that a row has been added. And then just click on finish and, and make sure you name the zap and also make sure you turn it on. I always forget to turn it on. And then let's just jump back to the dashboard. From here, you can see all of your available zaps and this is the one that we just created. So if we go back to our web form, let's send another test submission. And then if we go to our Google Sheets, you can see another row has been added. Now, let's just jump back to Zapier. And I wanna show you one more page, and this is the task history page. Now, this is very useful for debugging things because this shows you every single time a workflow or a zap has been fired off. Now, when a zap gets fired off, it is called a task. So this is the submission that we just sent earlier. And if we click on it, you can see all of the data that has come out of the webhook. And this is a good way to debug and make sure web form is sending the correct data. And then if you scroll down, you can see what was sent into Google Sheets and then what came out of Google Sheets. So if for some reason, rows stop getting added to your Google Sheets, come to this page first and make sure you see a success status. Now, if you see failed, that could mean that the Google Sheets API is down, but then you would have to debug it further. So that's pretty much it for this video. As you can see, integrating web form with a third-party SaaS application is pretty easy if you want to use Zapier. And best of all, you don't have to write any custom code.